Long before the big AI tsunami hit 18 months ago, some companies were already pushing the capabilities of tools utilizing machine learning systems. Topaz Labs got in on AI early and released their upscaling application Gigapixel back in 2018. This was followed by AI Denoise and AI Sharpen in 2019. I've been using their full AI suite. Topaz, Gigapixel, Denoise and Sharpen bought as a bundle since 2019. And it's been a mainstay of my post-processing toolkit. In 2022, Topaz announced a new product, Photo AI, which combined the three standalone apps into one and added a couple of brand new features into the bargain. To avoid pissing off folks like me who'd already bought the three products, they gave us existing owners Photo AI for free, which was a decent thing to do, and not one I've come to expect to software companies these days. I downloaded Photo AI, but didn't feel it was anywhere near as good as the individual apps, much less than the sum of its parts, if you like, and I continued to use the original suite. Fast forward to 2023, and Topaz have just rolled out Photo AI 2. I decided it was high time I had a proper look at it and to find out if it's worth a spot in the old toolbox. The purpose of Topaz Labs Photo AI 2 is to unify their machine learning suite and give you a one-stop shop for problematic images. That is the unique selling point of this app, to make up for shortcomings in photographs, whether they're too noisy, out of focus, too small, badly lit, shot with the wrong color balance, or all of the above. One of the reasons I've rarely used it is because it's not often I need to fix everything on a photograph. Usually there's just one problem, too much noise for instance, or a focusing issue. You don't have to use all of the sliders in this software of course, but the fact is that there's usually only one issue with my photographs, noise for instance, and I therefore use a single specialized tool to fix it. Or to put it another way, I'm not sure I'm the target demographic for this software. In order to streamline the benefits of the various features in Photo AI 2, there's a quarterback running the play, which kicks in when you load a photograph. It's called Autopilot, and it's a unifying adaptive machine learning tool that analyzes your problematic photograph and decides based on that machine learning, what needs to be done to it. And it's this feature targeted as someone that's happy to let the computer do both the heavy lifting and the big thinking that leads me to believe that a more mainstream sector is the intended audience of Photo AI too. Autopilot can make all the decisions if you let it. So in theory, it should spot that it's a perfectly sharp image, but there's a bit of noise, and then just apply denoise to it. Or you should notice that it's suffering from motion blur and just sharpen it. You don't have to follow any of the recommendations if you don't agree with them, but it's clearly been designed for people who don't want to spend much time thinking about what's wrong with a photograph. They just want it sorted. If you're happy to surrender control to a machine learning system and let it make all the decisions, then that's fine. But if you feel that it's not attending to something or it's gone too far with a the change, then you can roll it back or modify the settings to suit. One of the app's better features is its denoising capabilities. And so I put that to the test first. Okay, here's my Peak 2 catalog guys, and I've sorted these photographs by ISO. So the highest ISO shots I have in my sizable collection are here. And I found this particular drone shot here taken on my old Phantom 4. So I'm gonna go open in and Topaz Photo AI. So here you can see Autopilot has run a little assessment. It's come up with these recommendations and you can see the outcome on the right here. And I have to say that's pretty impressive. So if we hover over here, we can see what decisions Autopilot made in this case. So it says no lens corrections were found. Uh, no subject was detected, by which it means no central subject. It didn't find any faces, so it's scanning for humans because it does face recovery if it finds them. It did detect severe noise and medium blur, and it calculated some parameters based on that. So if we go into the removing noise, we've got raw normal version two with a relatively low strength. 
and some minor D blur. And in sharpening, we've got standard D sharpening again with quite low strength levels. And I have to say that that's an eminently sensible selection. I kind of expected it to go hard with the AI choices. And it hasn't. I'm quite happy with those changes. So I am going to save the image. And I've got a couple of choices here about where I save it to, the file name and suffix I can give to it, the format. You might want to keep it in DNG. So you have, you know, pseudo raw capabilities built into it still, or maybe a nice high resolution TIFF. I'm going to save it out as a tiff i think let's save that i should point out that i've got a top of the line m2 macbook pro 2023 edition the brand new model so it's whizzing through these changes pretty quickly you may find they run a little bit slower on your system if you have a slightly older mac or windows machine the ranges within which the autopilot feature works can be changed from the preferences if you prefer a less aggressive denoise algorithm then you can dial it back there have been some welcome changes on this front in particular i noticed that it will now not pointlessly fix any high quality photos you process with photo AI. As per its settings, when a non-raw image has low noise and low blur, Autopilot will choose to enable remove noise or sharpen, but not both. Topaz have made some pretty substantial upgrades under the hood of photo AI, and it's obviously a more capable bit of software now. For starters, they've added some brand new sharpen and denoise models. As I discovered, these new models do not work with all raw files, but given the results in my testing, that's not necessarily a bad thing. When I tested the application on raw files from my drone, my old Canon 550D, and my current X-T4, the old denoise algorithm worked far less aggressively and far more consistently than the new ones. Now you can produce some pretty awesome results with this software, but I would say that there was a very strong case for experimenting with the settings in here, and I will demonstrate why. We've got the remove noise tool here. Now by default, the autopilot decided that the raw normal version two was the way to go for this image. That's what raw normal V2 looks like at 80% magnification. Not fair, you cry, you know, who zooms in at 800% to look at an image? Well, we do because we're pixel peeping. But this is where it gets interesting. Watch if I switch this back to raw normal, which is the original machine learning tool that they had in the software on the previous version of Photo AI. Watch the hot pixel here and watch the kind of structures in the image here. So we'll go back to photo normal. Hot pixel removed. And as you can see, that is a substantially cleaner image. I don't know what's going on with the algorithm in this normal V2, but all these lines in here, you know, this is not a good outcome. If you're interested, incidentally, here's what raw strong looks like. Kind of okay. We've got a little bit more noise in this hillside here. And here's raw strong version two, the hot pixels back and some of those structures are back. So I don't know, Topaz, I think you need to look again at your algorithms because that is much better than that. Interesting, eh? They only have a few raw file formats to test on, and so it's possible that the version two algorithms work better on other camera systems' raw files. However, I did also put the app through its paces with one of my XT4 raw files. So the previous shot was taken on an old drone, and I thought I would try a high ISO noise taken on my current camera, a Fujifilm XT4. So I've got some images that I shot at the rodeo at the uh, annual show here in, in Berry, uh, and these are extremely high ISO 8000 so they're really noisy images as you can see although I have to say I'm zoomed in at 800% here to, so we can do some proper pixel peeping and the first surprise so autopilot ran it detected faces and all sorts of stuff but the first surprise is that I only have one model so this is a problem that impacts Fujifilm cameras a lot. Uh, I've seen it on most of the denoising applications where some of these more advanced denoising 
algorithms they're using don't work with the compressed raw files that you get with the Fuji cameras. So I suspect that's what's happening here. And it's why I think I can only see one AI model when I open up the noise rather than seeing the four with the, with the drone raw shot. I've only got the one. And it's saying here it's the raw normal. Now, that isn't a huge issue because as we saw in the previous image, that, that new model they're using didn't go very well with my uh, my drone image. I far preferred the original algorithm. So it's done third strength, I guess, there. It's done no minor de-blurring on that. It's found the subject, which is the guy on the horse, a cowboy, and it's gone for a standard AI model on that with sort of bottom end of the strength, and it's recovered some faces as well. So before I zoom out, I'll turn on the processing for you can so you can see what it's done and it's really really cleaned this up nicely as you can see it's done a pretty nice job i don't have any great criticism of this a bit of blind going on here but like i say we're zoomed in at 800 percent let me zoom right out so we can see what the whole thing looks like that's the unfiltered version it's just rendering the full one and there's the finished image with the face recovery the denoising and everything else so flicking between the two let's put the old slider on we'll zoom in a little bit actually we'll go to 100 percent so you can see what's going on so look at the guy's face look at the arm and it's done a fairly okay job on this dude on the left here it's cleaned up the horse nicely all things being equal that's a pretty good job and interesting that it's just using the original normal algorithm for this so when it comes to functionality in photo ai too a lot will depend on the camera or drone you currently use and in the current version at least you won't find access to all models with all raw encoded images. By way of learning more about this, I decided to process a Sony raw photo shot on a ZV-1. So in order to test my theory that this software behaves markedly differently when it's confronted with raw files from different camera systems, I've opened up an image my wife took out on one of our recent photo vlogs. So I'll, uh, link that up there incidentally <laughs> watch it it was a quite entertaining one and this is an image she took on my sony zv1 camera and here's the the basic raw file now any raw editor will be able to you know bring some life to this photo but what i've done is i've enabled most of the things in photo ai on the side here and i'll toggle it on to show you what it's done so we're at 200 percent magnification and here is the process photo and i have no complaints about this at all it's done a really nice job of with the new beta tools uh, the lighting and color balancing has worked perfectly uh, and as i would like this to work uh, i've used the new standard v2 sharpening option again that's done a brilliant job it hasn't gone crazy it's just beautifully tightened up the edges of these flowers and branches and stuff like that and i've also got the new raw normal v2 which is pretty disastrous on some of the images as you saw earlier on but in this case it's worked brilliant so i guess if you've got a sony camera then you're laughing with photo ai too so the best advice i can give you based on my experiences is to download photo ai as a trial and see how it behaves with the raw files encoded by your camera system there's more to photo ai than denoise of course and i did put the other main features to the test too the resizing tool worked brilliantly if you create generative illustrations in something like stable diffusion or mid journey which tend to be very low resolution then you need an ai upscaler topaz are currently the best in the business in my opinion and giga pixel remains the high watermark in this sector but i found photo ai too did an excellent job as well topaz have put a couple of new sliders in the application which are prominently labeled with beta stickers these new tools are part of the unified post-processing workflow they're building out but in my testing I found that to be very hit and miss. The two sliders in question target lighting and color using the same machine learning tools to assess an image and adjust accordingly. I didn't find the results from either of these sliders to be of much use. The adjust lighting was heavy handed if left to its own devices, but moderately useful at very low settings. The color slider was also ineffective, turning subtle regions of color in my photographs into monochromatic blobs, unless 
I turned it right down. I also got some weird rectangular artifacts on a couple of test images. But remember, it is a beta feature and I'm sure they'll iron all that crap out when it goes into full production. As it stands, I wouldn't consider either of those beta sliders to be close to release quality. So where does that leave us then? Is Photo AI 2 worth purchasing for your post-processing workflow? Or should you just stick with the individual Topaz apps? an online cloud-based tool like Upscaler, or increasingly advanced tools built in something like Lightroom Classic. During my testing, I found the denoise and sharpening to be nearly as good as the individual Topaz suite of apps. You have more granular control with Gigapixel denoise and sharpen though, so bear that in mind if you're particular about your edits. I strongly believe the current best-in-class denoise remains to be DxO Photo Lab, with the AI denoise in Adobe Lightroom Classic getting surprisingly close. Photo AI 2's autopilot tool is probably the strongest feature in the app, since in my testing it made sensible decisions about which tools to use and how far to push them. I see the app as something that's aimed more at a broader consumer market rather than this serious hobbyist photographer. Topaz have worked hard to make Photo AI 2 as accessible as possible with a thoughtfully designed interface that's clean and a pleasure to use. They've also made sure the app works with as many other photo editors as possible and can be launched directly from Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, Infinity Photo and Apple Photos. The inclusion of Apple Photos is an interesting choice since the Pro Raw images produced on iPhone 14 and 15 are not supported. If you don't currently own any denoising, sharpening or resizing tools, then I'd have no hesitation in recommending Photo AI 2. It's a different matter entirely if, like me, you already own those other tools. And if you currently own DxO Photo Lab or the individual Topaz tools, then I wouldn't bother getting it. If your main interest is with the denoising capabilities and you already own Lightroom Classic, then I'd stick with the built-in AI denoise. Photo AI 2 is a capable bit of advanced post-processing software. It's priced competitively at 159 bucks. But if you're looking for a single app to fix problematic raw images, you could do a lot worse. And that'll do us for this review of Photo AI 2, a much improved bit of software that might just find its niche with this latest release. If you enjoyed this video and got value from it, then please consider leaving a like and a comment below and consider subscribing to see more generalized photography bollocks, video and drone related content from me in your YouTube feed. Until the next time guys, ta-ta.